Exactly, because you know I was going to burst. <laughs> What's up, family? It's Chris. And it's Big Dog. And you're watching Bad Outside TV, guys. And we're back at it again with another request. And this one came from... Violence TV said, Please react to history, six-day war, 1967 war in the Middle East. Israel is the only country in the Middle East entirely controlled by Europeans. In the Middle East, he threw the link. And well, you had to say it twice. I said it twice? No, no, he was like, it's the only country, whatever, in the Middle East controlled by Europeans in the Middle East. That's why I was like, what? It took us to a video called, Here's How the Six-Day War Changed the Map of the Middle East. I don't understand, so I don't think I ever learned this. So guys, he's back on violence. Everything he posts is violent. I thought this would be different, but I guess not. It's about a war. So we're gonna get right into the video, guys. But before we do, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Comment down below what you guys like to see next. Hit that notification bell to get notification when we upload. And subscribe to join the family. Now let's get into the video. <laughs> On June 5th, 1967, the largest armed conflict erupted. While it lasted just under a week, the Six-Day War would change the geography of the Middle East for decades to come. First, it's important to understand the basics about the disputed territory in and around modern-day Israel. Title to lay claim to the land based on a promise from God. Ancestors lived there for hundreds of years, believed they were the rightful inhabitants. In May 1948, Israel, with authority from the United Nations, formally declared its independence. In doing so, the Israeli government including part of the holy city of Jerusalem. God said it's our land, and they like, okay, well, we've been living here. So that's how you already know it's going to be a problem, because two different things going on. Jerusalem. The new country was therefore by design surrounded by pro-Palestine Arab nations that Israel's existence. Almost immediately, troops from those neighboring countries invaded Israel and tried to reclaim some of the The Israeli government responded by... While peacekeepers from the UN worked to prevent the region from descending into chaos. Over the next two decades, tensions continued to simmer in the region as Israeli and Palestinian forces clashed, sometimes violently over dispute over Jerusalem. In the spring of 1967, Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser. and on moves designed to further economic stability in hopes of eliminating the country and reclaiming its land by formalized an alliance along with Jordan and Iraq soon after the countries began to increase their military presence along Like, I was just looking, I was like, there's some black and white, but it's a little pattern, look like some cows. Swiftly, and act. The timeline. On June 5th, the Israeli military launched simultaneous... The first strike strategy was a resounding success. As Israel's air assaults decimated the Egyptian and Syrian before their planes had even... Really suck. That looked like that was really some foolishness. What they just flew it over there with it like some missiles or something? Mm -hmm. What that thing was sound like the Cuban Missile Crisis. <laughs> what was it? That was it. The Cuban Missile Crisis was just that um, they had a missile that was real close to American land, and they could declare nuclear war on us, but they ain't never shoot it. That's what that was. I just remember it was by some missiles. I didn't know if they shot it or what. No, but. they just had, I think they had one. And Cuba is right there. Mm -hmm. So it was in Cuba, but it wasn't our missile. And Cuba is like really close to us. 
So they it's like, like if they want to play, now. it's like if America want to play, we are in all of them. And so we had them take the missile down. Operations in West Jerusalem faced and were quickly overmatched by Israeli. Ground, allowing their troops to expand in multiple directions across the region, overpowering their Arab foes in expanding Israeli territory. By June 7th, the United Nations Security Council called for a ceasefire. The Jordanian leadership accepted immediately, and a significantly weakened Egyptian government did the same on June 8th. The Syrian military retreated from the disputed territory of Golan Heights on June 10th, and the ceasefire took effect for all parties involved. More than 10,000 members of the pro-Palestine Arab wow. immediately placed under Israeli rule. Nearly 800 Israeli troops were also killed. And Sinai Peninsula. Right. Well, what y'all had to do the most? Jerusalem. The war may have only lasted six days. Its impact redrew the map. They did all that in six days. Uh oh, what to say? <laughs> only person I know did more than that in six days was God. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So what is that in six days? They ain't got all that. <laughs> Alright, well, this is the end of the video, guys. If you like to see the original video by yourself, the link will be down in the description below. And so, it's our social media. Add us, follow us. You guys already know the deal. But since this is the end of the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Comment down below what you guys like to see next. Hit that notification bell to get a notification when we upload. And <clears throat> subscribe to join the family. See you guys in the next video.